Hello, my name is Julie Thorpe and I'm a Cognitive Behavioural Therapist working for Combat Stress. Today I'm going to be sharing ideas on how to manage your mental health by giving yourself a break with some compassion for yourself and others through this difficult time of self-isolation. So, what's compassion? Why is it relevant? Why do we need it? Compassion is the awareness of suffering in ourselves and others with a strong desire to do something about that to make it better. Unfortunately, it's often easier to show compassion to other people than to ourselves. When we're able to show greater compassion to ourselves, we can have the understanding that we're only human and we're just doing the best that we can given the circumstances. This improves our mental health and our ability to cope with the stresses of this situation. So, how can compassion help in the current situation? At this time, it can feel like there's an invisible enemy that we can't fight except by staying at home. Many of us have got increased worries. You know, we might be lonely, we might be worried about money situation, we might be worried about our own health or the health of our loved ones and how we'd cope if they became unwell. Giving yourself a break and allowing yourself to be compassionate to yourself and others helps to regulate fear. Anxiety symptoms will be reduced physically, so this makes us feel calmer and more in control, so better able to manage. The way we speak to ourselves has got a huge amount to do with our mental health. When we're self-critical, our brain feels threatened and it makes our body feel threatened as well leading to anxiety and low mood and potentially a poorer quality of life. Learning to combat this with self-compassion makes a massive difference to our mental and physical health. How does this relate to veterans and why is this worse now? Well, you were trained to look after your own, even if they weren't your mates with the buddy-buddy system. You worked and played together and you developed really strong camaraderie. However, it isn't always that easy to relate that same sense of caring to yourself. You may feel that you normally have the role of the protector of others, but through no fault of your own, you might not be able to protect them in the way you want to right now. You might be holding yourselves to high standards, which can make you feel quite self-critical. We can all develop habits of putting ourselves down, this can make us unhappy with the feeling that we're not good enough, which makes COVID-19 even harder to manage at this time. So, what can you do to help right now? Well, firstly, remember that you have been in really difficult situations before, when you've been isolated from your loved ones and you've, you've come through those. Veterans are amazingly resilient. Don't feel ashamed of your worries. And don't give yourself a hard time for worrying. This is normal, it's not a sign of weakness. Go easy on yourself and others. It's okay not to be managing as well as you might normally do. These are extraordinary times and everyone copes with stress, anxiety and fear differently. Just give yourself a break. A skill that you can practice later is soothing rhythmic breathing technique, which will calm down a stress response and allow you to think more clearly. How you would do this is breathe in for a count of four, hold for a count of two, then breathe out for a count of four and repeat and keep doing this for a couple of minutes. This soothing breathing is helpful because it calms down a stress response and helps us to be more open to self-care. When you notice that you're being very tough on yourself, stop and think, would I talk to a good friend like this? Banter aside, what would I say to them? What would they say to me? Tell yourself that you're doing the best that you can given the circumstances. Be wary of misinformation. There's a lot of panic postings at the moment that could make us feel very anxious. When you can't control how others behave, you can control your own actions and try to only look at official government briefings and websites rather than social media. Look out for news, not gossip. A 
appreciate your relationships and look after them. Phone people, use technologies to keep in touch. Social distancing is only meant to be physical, not emotional. Look after your body with a healthy diet, plenty of fluids and exercise. Exercise releases endorphins to help us feel good, so it's a really good form of self-care. Think about helpful ways that you already care and look after yourself and others and keep doing them. Seek out sources of support helpful to you. Notice and appreciate the small stuff. In isolation, life slows down and we've got time to notice the things around us that we might not have noticed before. Now we can fully appreciate some of the detail of the world around us. Try to notice one good thing each day, no matter how small. It's harder now, but that makes it all the more helpful when you achieve it. Do relaxation exercises. There are lots of different relaxation types on the internet. Try some different ones, see which ones work better for you. Have a think about if there's any way that you can help other people. Finally, it's called compassionate practice because it needs practice. Don't beat yourself up for lapsing into previous familiar ways of coping. Just recognise and return to helpful ways of self-caring for the long term. Remember, this is affecting the entire planet Therefore, the best professionals all over the world are putting all of their knowledge and skills into working on defeating this virus. This isn't forever, and we're going to get through this together. In the meanwhile, the most compassionate, helpful thing that you can do for yourself and others is to self-care whilst you're staying at home. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this information on staying healthy during COVID-19 helpful.